Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back today with another alternative using the April 2021 paper pumpkin. Today I'm going to be using the die cut stickers from the kit to create a cute and fun set of cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday I shared how I created this set of four clear cards that you see on screen now using the So Cool Paper Pumpkin Kit. This one is bright and cheery and summery, and I was very inspired by it when I first got it. Today I'm back to do another set of cards, and for this one I'm actually going to be using the die cut stickers. These aren't necessarily to go on the cards that Paper Pumpkin shows, but they did add those extra, maybe for the envelopes. But I thought today I would make these a starring role in a set of cards. What I'm going to be doing is using the ink pad Bermuda Bay to do a little water coloring and then just make very clean and simple note cards that you could add a sentiment to later or just leave blank and give to a friend or family member as a gift. This process is going to be pretty similar to the set of cards you see on screen. For these, I use some die cut ephemera from the Lazy Day Box of the Month kit from Not Too Shabby to create the cards instead of stickers. Now, if you want to see either my clear card video or the set from Not Too Shabby, I will leave both of those videos linked in that description box below. Here in just a minute, I will start on the process and I will go to a voiceover. I will let you know if I add any products or tools as we go along, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's cards, I will be cutting down a large piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth into 10 pieces that are 3 inches wide by 4 and a quarter inches tall. I like the Strathmore Bristol Smooth when I am watercoloring with inks and when I use my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. Now I do have to get out just a little bit more than one of those large sheets, so I pulled in my little container of Bristol Smooth scraps and I cut down that tenth piece. Next up on the cutter are three pieces of Gina K Designs Plum Punch cardstock. I thought this went well with the purple colors in the stickers. I'm going to cut these down until I get 10 pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Off camera, I cut and folded some top fold A2 card bases, and I'm going to be adding some texture to the front of these with my favorite Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder. Because there will be quite a bit of white space around my cardstock mat, I thought this would add a nice little touch. When I go to put these stickers onto the card fronts, I want to pop them up off the front with some foam tape. But because the back is sticky, if the card ever gets squished or if it gets kind of pressed in shipping, then the sticker is going to stick down to the cardstock where there is no foam tape. So what I need to do is remove that sticky and all I did I was bring in my embossing buddy and I kind of tap the powder onto the back of the sticker until the stickiness is all gone. Now eventually I have quite a bit of powder on my work surface so I start taking them and just rubbing them in that powder and this is going to take all that stickiness away so later I can add my new adhesive and have a little bit of dimension on the card front. 
Now this next little part is probably optional. I might have went slightly overboard. I wanted to make myself some masks so I could roughly sketch on my card front where each of my stickers would go. So when I did my water coloring, I knew that the water coloring would extend behind where the sticker fit. So I cut out, very roughly cut out, the yellow insides from the leftover sticker sheet. Once the mask was complete, I brought in everything I would need for the water coloring. That was my Strathmore Bristol Smooth pieces, my ink from the paper pumpkin kit, a stamp block that I'll be using as a watercolor palette, and a water brush. With my pencil, I lightly traced around the inside edge of each of those masks. Now you'll see here I left a pretty good border. As I went on, I started making that smaller and it probably would be a good idea to make it a little bit closer to the edge of where the sticker goes because I kept having to extend my watercolor later, but at least it gave me a place to start. I would just center each of the masks on the card front as best as possible and trace around each of those until all 10 of my pieces were ready for water coloring. While I work on some more tracing, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question is a little extra special. It is the first one submitted by a channel member. Sherry P would like to know, do you prefer small or large ink pads? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. For myself, I think each ink pad has its own uses. A couple Christmases ago, I got the entire set of Gina K Designs ink cubes because I wanted to get some different colors and have them be affordable and I could try them out. Well, I did love them so much that I ended up purchasing all of the large ink pads. And I have to tell you that I thought I would be using those large ink pads all of the time, but I do find when I have smaller stamps or I'm using my Misty, I do revert back to the smaller ink cubes. On my Misty, it seems every time that I use one of those large ink pads that I end up getting ink all over the top of my Misty. Thank you so much to Sherry for that fun question. And if you would like to find out more about the perks of being a channel member, I do have a link at the very top of the description box below that you can get more information. Once all of the masks had been traced, it was time to start doing the water coloring. I brought in one of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth pieces and the coordinating sticker. I placed some of the ink just down on that clear stamp block and I'm adding a little water to it using my water brush. Then I grab a little bit of the ink and I just kind of loosely paint around where that pencil line is. Every once in a while, I will bring in the sticker to see how much of the blue you can see from behind the sticker. And if needed, I bring in more color or I blend out a little bit more. Now, the reason I chose this blue was not only did it come with a kit, so if you have paper pumpkin, you have it, but I did find that this color went well with all of the sticker images. I continued this same process until I had all 10 cards watercolored. Now you will notice that some are portrait and some are horizontal. It just depended on how the sticker was oriented. To add a little bit more of the blue and some texture to that background, I brought in the little dot stamp from the paper pumpkin kit and I'm going to be using the ink pad to stamp this three times around each of the stickers. I try to keep it in a triangle shape and I just like how it's the same color ink but the watercolor is just nice and faded and then those dots are strong, just giving it a little extra color. The next step in this card set was to mat each of the watercolor pieces with the Plum Punch cardstock. For now, I'm not going to adhere down the sticker. I just set the little group of two pieces to the side and continue to mat those watercolor pieces. 
Then I brought in my big blue rolls of foam tape so I can put this on the back of the stickers. I brought in my three quarter inch width and my quarter inch width. For now, I am only going to add the foam tape to the back of all of the stickers, again, just keeping the two parts of the card together. This is more of an assembly line way of doing this. And I don't wanna put the foam tape on the back of the stickers now and then adhere to the card fronts because it's always a little bit more difficult to place adhesive on the back of something when it is bumpy with foam tape. Once all of the foam tape was in place, I could assemble the cards. The plum punch and watercolor piece got centered on the card front, and then I pulled the release paper on the sticker, and that got adhered there as well. I did try to line it up with those light pencil lines that I had made originally. I just made sure that you could see some of the dots that I had stamped and some of the watercolor. For these cards today, I am gonna keep them simple. I won't be adding any bling, but I think that those stamp dots kind of take the place of that. Here's a close-up look at each of the cards after they're finished. I just love the clean and simple feel, and I know that right now they don't have sentiments on them, but this is just a great way that if you need a card for something and you don't have it for this specific occasion, you could quickly stamp something on the inside that goes along with it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure if you haven't already that you click on that subscribe button below. And until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.